let's let's go to this because they ran a story which was just false, just fake news because they're lazy. They don't know how to do their job. And when it's convenient not to do so because it promotes a narrative, they have no incentive not to do it. Is this it? So I'm gonna, I got to give the credit where it starts. Um, StreamYard, let me just make sure we're aligned here. And we are. This is from... Oh, these are the charges. Wrong, wrong window. Hold on. Son of a gun. Producer, will you get the stuff straight here? Let me see here. Share. It was a, it would seem that CBC. Okay, I think this is it. <laughs> Post millennial covered it, but it was um it was here we go, here we go. It was uh Greg Ree, lawyer and producer, Fox News. Yeah, it's Fox News people. So if you want to write it off for that, go right ahead. CBC ran a story about this individual who we see. I'll bring this up. I regret going. Protester says he's spent life savings to support Freedom Convoy. Just right there off the headline, not a question of being black-pilled, not even a question of being red-pilled. It's a question of having half a brain. Something sounds a little fishy here. Protester says he spent life savings to support Freedom Convoy. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Let's just read, let's just read the story. A protester who joined the so-called Freedom Convoy Uh, This is being reported by so-called journalists at CBC, which occupied, here we go again. It's like, just say the word over and over again, cross state lines, cross state lines, which occupied downtown Ottawa for much of February, says he regrets taking part after he lost $13,000 and his home protesting something he never really, quote, had a stance on. A lot of questions here, by the way. There are a lot of questions to flesh out in this one statement. This doesn't happen in an afternoon. He lost his $13,000 receipts and give them up, lost his home. Something tells me if I'm going to go make a guess here that an individual might have lost their home for reasons other than um, uh, <laughs> that reasons other than participating in, in, in this protest. Something tells me if, I, if I'm just being a reasonably objective analytical litigator here. I regret going, he said to, said Martin Joseph Englehart, who spoke to CBC via Zoom from Hope, BC. Englehart said he has nothing left after spending his life savings on gas and food for the, so he spent $13,000 on gas and food for the occupiers. That makes no sense to anybody. I mean, I, gas is expensive. Uh, I will do the math as to how much it would cost to drive a standard vehicle from, I get, 600 kilometers for about $120 on my Subaru. This doesn't make sense. $13,000 on gas and food for the occupiers. Anybody who saw any portion of the live stream documenting that I was doing saw the food that was there. Okay. Makes no sense. But, you know, leave it to so-called journalists at the CBC to ask the right questions. I started delivering fuel and picking up laundry. Everything for the truckers. Hmm then it would seem that this story could be corroborated by the truckers and wait until you see how this story gets corroborated. Corroborated. From January 6th, yeah, yeah, bank statements provided CBC show Angular transferred thousands of dollars and spent thousands of dollars more at gas station near the convoy road. Transferred. I'd I'd like to see the receipts to that, where he was stationed for the majority of the protest. He said he's currently living out of his SUV and said his landlord kicked him out. Oh, I thought they said he lost his home. And now they're saying that he got kicked out by a landlord, which seems to be a tenant issue. Doesn't matter. Just carry on. It's, this is such a good story for the CBC. This is like all of those regret not not doing something on their deathbeds. I mean, it's, it's, it's too good to question. He said he's unable to access his account because it remains frozen. How did they get the receipts from his bank account if it's frozen? More than 250 accounts linked to people, yada, yada, yada. They've been frozen. Yeah, we, we know that. Millions of dollars were donated. We know that. Engelhardt admits he never had a stance on mandates, but felt drawn to the movement after he was prevented from visiting a dying friend at a hospital, at a Montreal hospital, in June because of COVID restrictions. Okay, so he never had a stance, but had a stance as of June. Here we go. Look at this. Uh, you know, I don't even know what that, I don't want to get in trouble. This is on the CBC, but I, I don't know what that is there. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. So this is the story. This is the story. 
cost to participate. Just let me see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the this is the warning. This is the moral. Uh, let me see. Do you guys, I'm getting. Why do my email Outlook notifications continue to come in after I've shut Outlook down? Okay, cost for participating. When hearing Engelhart's story, University of Ottawa law professor Joao Veloso said he was not surprised. Veloso conducted his research on the ground in Ottawa during the entirety of the occupation. He was examining the anthropological and sociological aspects of the protest. Sorry, is this a law professor or an anthropology professor? Doesn't matter. You may have people that were seeking a sense of community, said Veloso. Everybody was tired of the pandemic, and you see people for the first time in two years. I can totally understand that. But there's a cost, he warned. We are not talking about people with a lot of resources, he said. They have their trucks, they have some funds, but the vast majority of the protesters were middle class, somewhat, sometimes, sometimes low. Okay. $300 million lawsuit, yada, yada, yada. Not all the people that were received, not all the people that were there received the money that some of the organizers received. We have no idea if there was dark money. Well, apparently this individual, uh, Professor Veloso, does not read the news because even the uh, the people doing the research said, yeah, the, I think the, the they determined that 130,000 donations came from Canadians. So we know where this money came from. It was not dark money, but nice hypothesis there. So that's the story. This guy regrets going, and they have some text messages. Now let's just go back to where we were on the Twitter world. I'm going to close this, make sure that we still see this. Let's go back to where we were on the Twitterverse. And let's take a break for one second, actually, just to see one thing here. Um, da, da, da. Let me see one thing here. Okay, well, there was no chat, but thank you very much. That's the story. Sounds fishy. Sounds fishy. Uh, but by way of by way of consensus in the chat, maybe I'll run a poll. Fishy one, not fishy two. Fishy one, legit two. Let's just see. <laughs> let's just see what people think. But let's go back to the tweet. Yeah, let's take <sighs> take a breather break and a back crack break. Hold on. Oh, that was good actually. Let me see this side here. Oh no, that didn't work. Oh, someone just said they're in Australia. <laughs> One unanimous. But now I wanted to see, hey, I'm in Australia and just happened to click on the CBC article about the guy who spent 13000 and wondered on the veracity. Jack Jackerson. Sorry, I don't know if that's your real name, but it's actually kind of awesome if it is. Um, but I suspect it might not be. But Jack Jackerson, wait until you hear the punchline to this story. Because this is what actual journalists do. They actually fact check the story before they run something, despite how good it makes them feel and how fitting of the narrative it is. This is from uh, Greg Gregory, and then we're going to get to the post-millennial. CBC reports that a Freedom Convoy protester regrets challenging Trudeau's authority, <laughs> lost his life savings, lives out of his SUV. There are many serious factual errors to this to the story. Let's just go to one. I, I'm not a fan of the threads because I can never seem to follow them properly. Here we go. First, CBC reports that Engelhart was arrested on February 15. As proof, CBC provides a ticket from the 10th. Further, this ticket is not proof of an arrest. Okay, fine. Second, my nose is itchy. CBC reports that the man's bank account has been frozen. Supposedly, the individual posted this video as proof, but merely suggests e-transfers did not go through. The man feeds the line about accounts being frozen. CBC repeats it. Uh, third, numerous people, this is the good one. Uh, I say the good one. This is the big one. If he was going out and helping these con truckers, giving them food, money, buying them gas, he'd be known to the truckers. And it sounds like he was. Third, numerous people in the Ottawa area have publicly accused this man of scamming them with false sob stories for money. Uh, and this is from, this is a post that someone says, scammer alert. This guy is a well-known scammer around Sault Ste. Marie. I hosted him for a night with my friends. Uh, nothing added up with him. Scammed many with his false stories of being ex-forces with PTSD. Terminal. Okay, take that for what it's worth. But it's not irrelevant. Uh, let's just go back. And then there was, uh, that was four or five. And let's just go to, well, I don't know where this ends. This is why they get confusing. I've reached out to the CBC. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Haven't heard back. Oh, Gregory, haven't, I haven't seen this one. Update. Have now obtained records of Engelhart's wire transfers. It appears CBC did not bother to check where Engelhart was sending his money or request withdrawal receipts. They simply assumed it was going to accounts Engelhart did not control. CBC promising response today. Anyways, it goes on, but uh, let, you know what? Let me, let me give this all to you so you can all go see this in the chat and you can follow it yourself. So 
the story probably is absolute bunk from an individual who is probably not uh, being <laughs> forthright, to, to put it mildly. Uh, and let me see what else there was here. So that, that's, 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 that's CBC quality journalism. I mean, who needs to actually check the individual story when it fits the narrative so well, you get paid for doing garbage journalism in any event. And by the time you print the retraction, none of the readers who actually waste their time reading CBC are ever going to know about it. Let's close this one down. And then we'll go to the post-millennial because let's just see what we got in the chat here. Stop Viva, third and fourth hand information. Whoa, what's third and fourth hand information? What the, what the, what the individual who they cited is saying? Yeah, I gave all my, I, I don't know where the money went. I lost, I, I was arrested, but there's no, there's no, someone can go and find out where the individual was arrested if he, if he indeed were. And by the way, just to that response, it's not, for, I, I know personally an individual involved in the convoy uh, who was, who was scammed with this individual, but I, I'm, I, I'm not that type of journalist, if I'm a journalist at all, and that's not what I do. But that's what people should do. I, 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 could, I could put the CBC in touch with someone who I believe already actually made a public statement that he personally was scammed by this individual. Um, I see a discussion in the chat that I don't know if I'm going to get involved in. So, so that it's it's. Oops, defund the CBC. He scammed the truckers. I mean, I've been telling you this. I, I know someone personally who put out a statement. I'm just not, you know, you can go find it. Uh, and people in the chat probably know who it was. Personally scanned by the individual. But who cares? This is this is the deathbed uh, apology story that is just too darn good for the CBC to bother checking and for the CBC to feel compelled to have the obligation to do their jobs properly because it's without consequence. Now, let me just go to the post-millennial, uh, which does real journalism. Uh, here we go. Post millennial people. That's Joe Rogan. I thought I thought that was a picture of me for a second. CBC regretful trucker convoy protester story falls apart. Uh, okay, a story hyped, but let me just make sure. Sorry, people. Yep, yeah, we're there. Okay, good. A story hyped by the CBC and CTV about a regretful trucker, yada yada yada, is being disrupted. Uh, is being disputed by those who were on the ground with him in Ottawa and those who have been victims of his previous alleged scams. Published Thursday, the story focuses on the individual, a man claiming to have given away all of his life savings. We read this part. Salivating at the idea of a gullible right-winger mascot, CBC seemingly ran this story to project the narrative, yada, yada, yada. We know why they ran it. In addition, CBC CTD also ran a story of Angle on Anglehart where he says he is sorry to the people of Ottawa, noting how they had to endure all the horns and all the weirdos. Nonetheless, he alleges to have joined the protest because he was upset. Okay, fine, whatever. Angelart's story is now being disputed by countless individuals who were with him in Ottawa or have been victims of his scams across the country. Many aspects of CBC's piece of self-evidently suspicious or self-evidently suspicious. Most were pointed out by Fox News' Greg Ree, who created a Twitter thread of all... Oh, he created a Twitter thread of all the falsehoods. Okay, there you go. Now, some of you might say this is, a, this is the vortex of, of uh, news reporting on news. The bottom line, there were... There were warnings of scam alert that predated, that predated this story. And when a story comes out of that magnitude, it requires um, a proportionate magnitude of investigative journalism verification. It is the story was like about it was it was implausible on its face, and that's it. It was implausible on its face, but just too good to let up. As with the uh, the arson story, which we now know is bunk. It's either a total. It's e it's either totally fake or it's absolutely unrelated to the convoy. But media ran with it, and by the time the the erratum comes around, too late, too bad, so sad. The damage is done. All right. So let me see what's going on in the chat here. Confession through projection. Post-millennial is actually conservative propaganda, just as bad, honestly. You, 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 give me, give me, uh, Joe Soffit, you're entitled to your opinion. Give me one example uh, of a story that they ran, which was factually incorrect, that they did not correct. Just give me, give me one example. In fact, let's start simplified. Give me one story that they ran that turned out to be false. And then we can see. Propaganda, meaning they focus on certain political leanings, then we're using propaganda wrong. 
Propaganda means putting out politically motivated disinformation. So show me an article that Post Millennial published that was false. And then the follow up is if they if they corrected it, because even journalists make mistakes. But other than that, OK, good. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. Go go read CBC CTV. I'll tell you, as far as I've known from the Post Millennial, they do more investigative work. Uh, I, I can't recall an example when they were wrong. But all that I know is that the CBC has proven to be liars over and over again. And they are absolute rubbish. And the Post Millennial has covered stories which were in fact true, that rubbish liars that are state funded media were not reporting, which makes Post Millennial, even if you think they have a political motivation, better than the rubbish.